So you want to build a virtual pinball table? Let me help. What's going on guys? Big VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this video series, I should say, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on my personal virtual pinball cabinet and how you could basically have this same exact cabinet. Try to think of it as a video series. On this one today, I'm gonna to basically give you the overview on what I have. I built this on a budget. Some people might not think that my budget is budget, but I did want everything possible, meaning I wanted live feedback, force feedback, which is solenoids. Uh, we have the beacons, I got strobes, we got flashes going on, and I did the surround sound feedback, which is why the cabinet is open right now and why I'm gonna shoot this video. Later videos, you're gonna really kind of see me doing like a screen grab with the Elgato. Um, again, I'm shooting this right now because I just put in the surround sound feedback. I haven't tested it yet, but that's gonna be later on. On this video, I'm gonna basically give you guys an overview on exactly what I have. I'll put some links down below as far as what you could get. And basically, think of it as a starter. If you guys are looking to get into virtual pinball and build a cabinet, and I should say have live DOF links, live force feedback. Consider the next videos helpful, hopefully. Uh, so now again, a quick, real quick rundown on my cabinet. This way you know exactly what I have. Again, I consider my cabinet to have everything you want as far as live force feedback, DOF links and all. The only thing I'm missing is a shaker motor and the chimes. Um, so a quick rundown on my cabinet alone. I do have solenoids. I got 10 solenoids. That's the max solenoids that you can find on a build. So I have 10 solenoids. Um, I do have beacons up top. I do have strobes and I do have flashers, the RGB flashers. On my RGB flashers, which I'll do in a separate video, they are not your standard Cree LED RGBs. I basically use automotive flashers to get those basically down packed. Um, the other thing I do have is the surround sound feedback and I do have the analog plunger, basically a rod and a um, potentiometer that makes the software think that this is an actual real plunger and all that. So as far as that, that is exactly what I have. Again, we do have solenoids, I do have strobes, I do have beacons and we do have the plunger and the surround sound feedback. As far as cabinet details, that I custom made myself. I followed the Bally's wide body. I'll put a link down below. Uh, but again, as far as my specs, it is a 50 inch TV, which is not the norm. A lot of people do 43, or I've seen people do 49 inch. I figured a 50 inch, why not? I have a 50 inch play field. I have a 32 inch back glass, and I have a 22 inch DMD. So again, you're gonna see some people's cabinets are different. I have it like that. Again, I'm gonna show you what I did to my cabinet. As far as software wise, this thing is being ran by a 16 channel Sane Smart, an LED Blinky, and a KLZ5215 or something like that. That's basically what's talking to the nudge, the analog plunger, and my buttons. So as far as USB devices, the only things that are going into my computer is the LED Blinky, and the KLZ25. The same smart 16 channel is connected to the LED blinky. That does not have a USB. That does not go into the computer. So again, as far as DOF links and how my system is running, it is a 32 channel LED blinky, a 16 channel same smart board, and the KLZ5215. Um, again, mapped out for the buttons. That's basically my encoder. It's the buns and the plunger. That's all you really need as far as getting all this to work. So now if you guys are like me and you're seeing the videos and maybe it's the first time you've ever seen a virtual pinball cabinet, you wanna just jump right in and, and just run. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did and I did it step by step. The cabinet was the last thing I got or I should say the last thing I made. The main important thing I wanted was to make sure that I had the force feedback which is the solenoids. That was the main important thing, which is the solenoids. You're gonna see in a sneak peek video, if you go back on my videos, I have a sneak peek video in which I basically first purchased 
the main components that I needed just to get Dolph links, which is these solenoids and the strobes and all that to work. So on my experience, I highly suggest before you invest in computers and TVs and the wood and all that, just do yourself a favor and get Dolph links set. It's most honestly the, the most difficult thing, not in a bad way, it's just, it's kind of tedious. So if you are again looking for a force feedback type of cabinet, I highly suggest purchasing the main components needed to get that working. Then later on you get into getting the actual computers and the monitors and all that. Again, worry about the DOF links. If you are not gonna build DOF links, meaning if you're not gonna use solenoids or the beacons or strobes, and you're just gonna have basically a TV for pinball, this video is not at all for you. This video is for somebody that does want force feedback. Again, if you are just gonna do a TV and a computer, you just need software. You don't need anything that I'm saying in this video. Again, this video and the next couple videos is basically for people that want the actual solenoids firing off and the beacons. Without further ado, I'm gonna tell you guys the main thing that you do need just to get started. All right, so again, this is honestly, I know it looks like a wire mess, if I was gonna redo it, again, I'm gonna guide you guys as far as what I highly suggest. But definitely 100%, if you do wanna get into the game and just get your feet wet and kind of at least get you the experience on the solenoids or even the beacons and all that, here are the main things that you do need. And it's literally right here. First things first, go to Amazon. You do need three separate power supplies. I have a 24 volt power supply, I have a 12 volt power supply, and I have a five volt power supply. Get the biggest amperage that you could get because we do have a lot of devices connected to it. I believe my 24 volt is at, I think 300 amps or 400 amps because all 10 solenoids are wired to it. So again, get the power supplies that should look just like this, big metal basically openings or I should say crating. My subwoofer box is kind of mounted and drilled. You'll have basically your terminals of positive and negatives here. So power supplies is a must. You do need all three separate ones. It's just do it because the LED blinky I believe needs a five volt and also the Sane Smart Board needs a 12 volt I believe or something like that. Just do yourself a favor and get 24 volt, 12 volt, five volt. Next thing up you do need is the LED blinky. I only have one. And again, with just this one, I still have ports available if I did want to do like LED matrixes, but you definitely want to get an LED blinky. I don't have a pin skate board, expansion board. You don't need any of that. Again, I'm literally showing you what you have, what I have in my cabinet. So again, get yourself a 32 channel LED blinky. Next up right here is my 16 channel Sane Smart. This right here is amazing. I love this thing. It's very easy to use and it also could take any voltage that you put into it. In my Sane Smart here, there's 16 channels. Out of 16 channels, we have 10 solenoids. I now have six devices left. One channel is going to the strobes one channel is going to the beacons, uh, and then I have RGB, that's three channels. Basically now I have one open channel left, I have that for the shaker motor. So again, anything that's basically powered is all via the Sane Smart Board. I personally think 16 channels is more than enough. If you're gonna do shaker and a chime, you might run into a snag with that because you need maybe 17 ports. But again, 16 ports is more than enough in my opinion. So as far as you first getting situated and starting, you need these five components. You need the power supply, you need the LED blinky, and you need the same smart. Get those things first, and that's how you're gonna get your feet wet basically. As far as computers, I was using a BS little cheap laptop just so I could plug in the LED Blinky and get things running as far as the LED Blinky software for testing. 
Other than that, that's all you really need just to get started. Next up, you'll definitely want to grab yourself a couple of solenoids. Um, some people use car starters. Some people have the Chinese cheap knockoff things. I went with the most reviewed and honestly the most kind of positive feedback to it, which are the Siemens contactors. Be very careful getting these though. I bought these on eBay. In my, my, cab in my cabinet right now, I have two separate types basically two different model numbers. You're gonna definitely wanna make sure that you are getting the correct model number. Um, I'm gonna bring you in close on one of these. So this right here I, is the main one. Uh, I right now kind of read it. Yes, it is the 3RH113111AB00. You are definitely gonna wanna make sure you get those model numbers as honestly, those are very powerful and they sound great. But again, in my cabinet, I have seven of those and I basically put the most powerful ones in the front. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. The back three was my mistake on eBay um, basically the seller had that number, but it turned out to not be that number at all. So you have to be very careful. Basically, I mean, again, I don't know the exact difference on these, but these right here definitely are not as strong or powerful. Um, the number here is a 3RH1140. 18B40. So again, that number right there is different than the ones I have in front. You can literally see it there. I don't know exactly what the difference is. They look alike, but I do notice that when these fire off, they do not sound or they do not like click as powerful as my fronts. So just be careful with that. Again, either one is good but definitely these sound way better than these. I didn't want to argue with the guy. I got these secondhand. I mean, you're talking maybe five to eight bucks, a solenoid, a contactor. So I basically said, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to put it in the back. It's faint in the back anyway. So again, these three right here are the less powerful number. So definitely want to be definitely careful. Always be sure to ask for pictures and always be sure to check out that number on the bottom right. Again, it's sideways right now, but again, just to show you like on this one, because my lighting is bad, these are the good ones. Definitely wanna get those, okay? I started with my sneak peek video, I started with three solenoids. Once I got that up and running with my BS laptop and the LED blinky, I then was comfortable and perfect enough to just finish off the 10 inside the cabinet. Next up, we'll talk about the beacons. A lot of people commented on the beacons. These beacons are awesome. These are the old school beacons, meaning they are not LED. There is an actual bulb in it. Um, I found these on eBay, about 30 bucks each, and they do give a great effect. This is a 12 volt beacon. So that's why we do have the 12 volt power supply because this beacon does need 12 volts. If you put 24 volts to that beacon, it will literally either catch fire or smoke out. So again, you have to be very careful when it comes to wiring, but we'll do that in a separate video. I did originally purchase LED beacons on Amazon. Don't do that they do not keep memory when they turn off. So the LED beacons would flash like a strobe instead of actually spin. Don't even waste your time, get these. I'll put the link down below. As far as the solenoids, the solenoids are the only things hooked up to 24 volts. All these solenoids need 24 volts. We have a 24 volt power supply. Literally the only thing wired to that 24 volts is all the solenoids. Next up, as far as strobes, um, I'll bring you up top here. There's one of them. I have several. I forgot to count on it. Oh, it's eight. 
I have eight white strobes and eight RGB flasher strobes. Uh, I'll bring you underneath the cabinet. So as you can see, these are strobes. They also are the flashers. Um, basically my flashers here, like there's a red LED here. This one is just white, that's a strobe. These are automotive parts. Literally the cheapest thing you could get. It's a pack of eight for I think I paid 24 bucks. These are 12 volts. So these will get wired up to 12 volts. Again, I did everything on a budget. You do not need professional strobe lights. I literally have automotive strobes. Now, as far as RGB flashers, I have the same again. It's an automotive strobe. These are red and blue. Um, it doesn't mean that it's a, a red and blue channel. They just flash red and blue. So again, my RGB flashers is not your normal flasher setup. Again, basically, instead of having wired RGB, I basically have like a red and blue flasher here. That's just wired up to the R. I have another one here that's wired up to the G. And then I have three up top. One, two, three, right up top. You can see it there, number three, number two, number one. That one right there is linked up to R, G, B. Again, they don't show red, they don't show blue, they don't show green, they just are an on off kind of strobe light. The Saint Smart tells it when to go off. So again, my strobes and my RGB flashers are 12 volt automotive lights. Now again, it's a little bit of a quick overview, but basically, if you could get your solenoids working, the strobes, the beacons is cake. Trust me, it is literally easy. Once you get these down, it's just rinse and repeat. You just have to be very careful as far as the wattage, the volts you are putting into those things. So you don't want to, you make sure you don't put 24 volts into the strobe lights or else you will literally have a fire or a, you will just break it. So be very careful. You do not need to know electrical for this. It's, it's easy guys, trust me, it's not that crazy. The only last things really left are the surround sound feedbacks. These are Dayton Audio. I, I literally just put them in so I didn't test them out, but basically we have four right there. Last thing I could describe to you is the potentiometer. This right here is what tells the software to act like a plunger. Do not go cheap with this. I bought a cheap $2 China one it broke within five minutes. You definitely wanna make sure you get a potentiometer that looks just like this. It's pretty long, it's actually too long. Um, I could have probably done, I forgot what length I did, but the big thing to notice is that this right here, basically it can't go up and down. My cheap China one was able to go up and down. So you kinda of wanna make sure it's enclosed. I'll just put the links down below. But in all honesty, that is all you need. The last thing you could do as far as underglow is very simple LED strip. I did one 16 foot reel. It literally covered the entire bottom. It covered my speaker holes and I was able to get one kind of strip across the back. My LED strip is a 12 volt strip. So basically we are using the 12 volt power supply to make it work. That is really it guys. I did not at all use my PC power supply for any of this. I do not recommend it. Leave your PC just for your PC. Do yourself a favor, get the three separate power supplies. It will be very easy. So now if you guys have been paying attention, you might have noticed that I've yet to say anything about five volts, nothing so far with five volts. I do have the ground to the LED blinky going into the five volts. And the only thing powered to the five volts is our arcade button lights. So again, all of the LEDs is being lit up by that. Even my launch ball is being lit up by that. The only last little piece of um, info that I would probably suggest, definitely want to get yourself leaf switches. These are a game 
changer for pinball you definitely need two leaf switches it's definitely worth the money i think i spent about maybe eight bucks on each i had the arcade buttons it's just an extra piece basically instead of a micro switch it is a leaf switch you definitely want to get those when you get into the cabinet part of it the only last thing i would probably suggest to save either money or save time or really keep it nice looking is grab yourself um 18 gauge wire i used four conductor regular standard audio cable that i had lying around maybe instead of four conductor what i mean by four conductor is that there is basically four wires inside of this they do sell some that have eight conductors in it which is eight wires if i used basically eight wires it would have been a little bit more neater so maybe just do that yes i do have 24 volts going through these 18 gauge wires and again it works for me i'm not responsible if your house catches on fire but it right now has been working for me i've left my pinball machine on for three straight days zero issues that's honestly it guys as far as the details going into the doff links and the force feedback later on you're going to see videos explaining how to hook up your led blinking and all that so stay tuned